Buddha day. Buddha. Buddha. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha day. Oh, Buddha day. They don't make plastic bags like they used to. Huh? No. It's like for I shit. What? I'm not from this area. Where's a good place to go get the tennis shoes? My feet are kind of wide, so I need, you know, some place that had like wide visors. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 I'm not from here, but I do. I, I usually go to a place like Coles. Uh, Coles is here. There's also Paperless. A what? A Good for you, I never did. When it's working, I stick with a good thing. Have a good day. Texas, I'll give you that. Absolutely, we'll give you that. Hell, I married one from Texas. I know. And I dated quite a few others from Texas, and so I've been told. Shoes are for shit. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. They need retread. Uh, it's murderous walking in these things. Oh my god.
trusted. Two hours early this morning. And, uh, hospitals and pharmacies and sprints and uh, everywhere. My feet are falling off. How are you? Could I ask a favor? I think people are supposed to be wearing me more money tonight or in the morning, but could I borrow five dollars back so I can go get a pack of cigarettes? I Do you? Yay, because I'm like having nicotine withdrawals. And I was I was going to go to Istanbul, but after last night, I don't know that I want to go to Istanbul. Okay. So I'm thinking I may move to India for a year. It's getting goofy. I was scheduled to go to, in three weeks to go to Istanbul. I'm now thinking maybe I don't want to go to Istanbul if they're blowing up airports. <laughs> well, it's their 12th terrorist attack in two years. I haven't been back in two years because of all the terrorist attacks. I thought that was stopping. Ugh. What is wrong with our world today? Are you here for the weekend or going on vacation? Oh, no, 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 I'm here. Maybe I'm going next week. Sometime in July. Nice. I'm going to find where I put my room key. I'm going to Torrance, California. Where? Torrance. Torrance, California. Oh, well, I live in LA. You should look me up when you get there. Yeah. When are you going to be out there? I don't know, maybe I'll somewhere in July. Oh, I'll be there. Going yeah, I live in uh, Pasadena area. Pasadena Glendale, when I'm out on the road too long. Oh, well, that's nice. It'll be right on the beach. I just took out the key where they put it. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you.
airport. It is jam-packed. It is a hot summer night here in Istanbul, and you just wouldn't know what had happened here a little more than 24 hours ago. Um, I was in contact with a, with a close friend of ours uh, in Istanbul, and he was on, a, on an email chain with uh, the owner of this airport who, who referred to this as Turkish resilience. I know there's been a lot of criticism as far as how could they open this airport up. Think about what happened in Brussels. Think about what happened uh, in so many other places. And the fact that it's back open, you know, contaminated crime scene, I, I've read it all, but when you talk to, you know, Turks here, they call it their own resilience. The owner of the airport telling my contact in Istanbul, uh, he wants it all fixed. This is the quote, fixed and up and running fully by tomorrow morning. Wow. And Brianna, the only sign as I was walking outside in a hustle and bustle of this warm night with the taxi drivers and people yelling, get out of the way, was the, the, the massive shattered glass, the, the glass from floor to ceiling, the, the ceiling tiles down, um, you know, in, in a position as if, you know, obviously you knew there was a massive explosion nearby. But that was it. That was the only way I knew something absolutely horrendous had happened to us, Brianna. It is really amazing. They just got right back to work, opened things back up, and just getting things moving at the world's 11th largest airport. First of all, and thanks so much uh, for a look there from the scene of the attack. I want to get more analysis now from our terrorism experts. Uh, we have Shonir Chopkai, who's a senior fellow and director of the Turkish Research Program at the Washington Institute. Also, hometown is Istanbul, bringing a lot of personal knowledge there. CNN senior law enforcement analyst and former FBI assistant director Tom Fuentes, and CNN national security commentator Mike Rogers. He's also the former chairman of the House Intelligence uh, committee. So, so now I think we heard Brooke describing this with, uh, oh, except for this shattered glass and many tiles that had not been replaced. You almost wanted to know if it had happened. Why was it so important to get this moving so quickly? That's correct. And compare that to what happened in Brussels, it took the Belgians uh, weeks to get the airport up and running. I think this was a deliberate effort on behalf of the Turkish government and the Turks to give a message outside because if ISIS by carrying out the attack tried to undermine Turkey's image as a place that's safe for business and safe for visitors by getting the airport up and running and functioning in under less than a day after the attack Turkey basically saying never mind this was just a lap we're back in business uh, the wow the impressive this week about 30 billion dollars in revenues 35 billion people come to Turkey a year. Istanbul is the sixth most visited city in the world. Mm. So it would have really hurt the city's image had the airport remained shut down. It shows uh, resilience. And it also shows that the Turks have a historic memory of having had terror attacks before, going back to the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I remember that as a kid when I was raised in Turkey, of course, airports have similar security that you would have here now, which are common but which were unthinkable back, back then. And I think Turkey has that history, so it's not hard for them to get good security up and going again. Are there any vulnerabilities created, Tom, by reopening so quickly? Well, not if they have the same security they had before and maybe just a little bit of an increase. They already had probably one of the best security systems in the world of any airport, far more than any U.S. airport. So I think what more could they really do other than shut the whole city down? And as Sonner mentioned, they're not going to do that, and, and correctly so. Do you think that this diminishes the effect of, assuming this is ISIS, of the attack of, of terrorists, does this diminish the impact that clearly they were trying to have on the psyche of people in Turkey and also people around the world watching them just get back on their feet so quickly? Yeah, I think it does. It's a psychological game. The terrorism in and of itself is a psychological tool that includes, obviously, horrendous violence. So when they do this and they come right back and get back there and the place is crowded and flights are leaving, that's you know, score one for, for the Turks. However, it still has an impact. They're already down about a third in tourism in Turkey. This will continue to have an impact. We're going, I think even the President uh, Erdogan today was talking about being more aggressive in the fight against terrorism. This is that opportunity to actually, I think, start dealing with the problem that is in places like Raqqa, Syria. How will that manifest itself, Turkey becoming tougher on that? Well, you know, Turkey has had an interesting game. They played an interesting game in this so far. So they were against Assad. They attacked some Turkish, uh, or excuse me, some Kurdish positions in Syria uh, early on. And, and I think finally it's all meeting itself out here that Turkey is going to have to be an active player in helping us, the United States, and other NATO allies 
in actually putting uh, putting some folks in places like Raqqa, Syria. That is where their command energy is. That's where they recruit, they train, they propagandize. Uh, and that is exactly where we're going to have to hit them. I think Turkey can play an important role in that. And I think an attack like this, this is their eighth suicide attack this year, will, I hope, get them interested in finally doing something more. All right, you guys, uh, stand by. We have more ahead with our, our wonderful panel here. Uh, we'll be back after uh, a quick break. Coming up, the latest on our breaking news, we'll have a closer look at a new tactic being used by terror groups. Hi, I'm Barry Sloan with NewTech, your business solutions company. Does your business need money? Whether you need 10000 or $10 million, you can count on NewTech the nation's largest non-bank government guaranteed lender. NewTech can help your business expand and grow. With a simple phone interview, we can pre-qualify you in just 48 hours. And with rates as low as 6%, you can see why so many businesses turn to NewTech. To see how easy getting a loan can be, contact NewTech, your business solutions company today. The following memories are brought to you by Prevagen. Your memories make you who you are. And now, your ability to recall short-term details could actually improve with age. The brain... Uh, sunshine. It's so wet. Shit. It's trash.
Oh, absolutely. So they're learning for a whole host of ways. A, uh, guarantee you that these aren't the only three people that were involved in this plot. Somebody built that vest, somebody assembled the weapons likely for them. There was probably some assistance and surveillance. So there are other people engaged. Those people, those are the ones that are doing the research. They're trying to figure out, okay, we, the, the suitcase bombing in Brussels didn't work as well. So if you notice, they went back to suicide vests. It's higher, the explosive, the explosive uh, unfortunately has a, a more lethality when it comes to civilians. So that, I think, is exactly what they're doing. They're using social media, they're using their own operational interest and intelligence, and they're applying it to new techniques. If you're looking um, at getting some assistance to these three suicide bombers, how many more people would you think would be involved? Use 20 Many more? I would guess probably at least half a dozen. Uh, normally, the people that have the expertise to make suicide vests don't put one on themselves. They need to keep the expertise for other people to sacrifice themselves. Same thing with the people that supply the guns, that do the logistics, do the background, do the surveillance. So, so they have a coordinated effort, and they take the lowest ranking people in that group and say, you do that, and then they go sacrifice themselves. So, but the particular techniques of this, you know, we've seen similar attacks like this over the years with firearms and explosives, the Mumbai attack, in that case they didn't have suicide vests, but they had grenades. So the 10 guys that initiated that attack and held a city of 20 million hostage for a weekend were doing it with automatic rifles and hand grenades. So it doesn't have to just be a suicide vest, but it can be a, you know, multifaceted attack with multiple types of weapons. Real quick, Sonair, this may provide some incentive for Turkey to very much concentrate on its border with Syria. Is that your expectation? Absolutely. I think the first phase of cooperation is going to be with U.S. and other Western intelligence agencies to find out who helped these guys carry out these horrific crimes, so identify the group. That's the first phase. The second phase is going to be sealing the border shut. It's a very porous border. It's going to be a smuggling route, and I think the rest of the Turkey will need U.S. assistance with technology, hardware, drones to seal that border uh, tight shut. And then you will have talk about further cooperation against ISIS inside Syria. It's very likely we're going to see Turkish airstrikes against the Islamic State. Turkish President Erdogan, who's known as a strongman, right-wing president, will not let ISIS get away with it. He will come down. But he's also going to work with the United States. But there's a, there's a trick here. There's also a Russian piece. The Russians basically control the airspace of northern Syria. Turkey and Russia are in a conflict after Turkey shut down the Russian plane in November, which had violated Turkish airspace. And so now Turkish planes cannot fly into Syria. Turkish troops cannot be deployed. So Turkey has to come to a modus of venue with Russia if, if it wants to deploy troops into Syria. All right, so Mayor Clarissa, Tom, Chairman Rogers, thanks to all of you. And coming up, Donald Trump says waterboarding suspected terrorists is one way to defend the U.S. from attacks like the one in Istanbul. We'll bring the reaction from the presumptive Republican nominee. Folks, there's something going on that's really, really Oh dear God. Alright, it's Shut bad. Up. Safety doesn't come in a box. It's not a banner that goes on a wall. It's not something you do down in bed or when it's convenient. It's using state-of-the-art simulators to better prepare for any situation. It's giving offshore teams onshore support, and it's empowering anyone to stop a job if something doesn't seem right. At BP, safety is never being satisfied, and always working to be better. These are the faces of arthritis, and when they have pain, they turn to Australian Green. Here's why they love it. Australian Green doesn't burn, and there's no odor. There's a real medicine in there. It's a practice I bought it because of money back there too. I keep buying it because of oils, natural oils from herbs, lavender, ginger, tree bark, things that help ground me. Natural things. Approaching Medicare eligibility, you may think you can put off checking out your Medicare options until you're 65. 